Hi everyone and welcome to lesson 5 of theme 2 GCSE Geography. Today we're going to be focusing on population change. So, so far we've been focusing on a relatively local or national scale, what's happening along the urban-rural continuum, why people are leaving the city and moving to the countryside, what's happening to services in the most remote rural areas, mostly staying focused in Britain really. What we're going to look at now is one of the main challenges facing humanity, if you like, is the fact that population on our planet is growing. So we're going to look on a global scale at why population is changing in LICs and HICs, and then next lesson we'll move on to the impact of that change. So we're going to construct the definition of some new key terms today, and we're going to then look at some data and identify the most appropriate graph for that data. After we've constructed said graph, we will then analyse and explain the differences that we can identify in them. So I'd like you to pause the video here a moment, go ahead and write down today's title, and we can get started. Okay, so first off, there's some key terms that we're going to be using today. A couple of them you'll be familiar with already, but others you may not. So, birth rate and death rate. It's important that you remember the word average in these two definitions, okay? The birth rate is the average number of live births per thousand people in the population. The reason it has to be an average number is it makes it comparable from country to country. Regardless of the size of the population or the area of the country, you can compare birth rate and death rate in different countries because it is an average figure. So it's the number of live births per thousand people in the population for birth rate and the average number of deaths per thousand people in the population for death rate. HIC and LIC are terms that we should be familiar with already. Um, a natural increase, it's the rate at which the population is changing naturally. So it does not count immigration or emigration. It's purely you take the number of people being added and the number of people leaving the population, dying, and what's the difference between them. Okay, so the difference between the birth rate and the death rate is how much your population will naturally be increasing by. So I'd like you to pause the video here a minute and go ahead and write down these key terms and their definitions. If you are 100% sure of HIC and LIC, then you don't need to write those down right now. Okay, so first off, let's look at the factors that um, affect birth rate and death rate. And leading into that, we're going to look at a Worldometer's website. Now, in developing nations, it is the law, in fact, that within a certain number of days of a baby being born or within a certain number of days of somebody dying, you have to register that birth or register that death. And that data gets put into computers. We also have census data, so every couple of years, by law, each household in Britain has to fill in a survey on who lives there, what religion they practice, how old they are, how many children you have, what your income is, all this information about your family. And again, that then all gets inputted into computers. And this happens in countries all around the world. So wherever you've got data in computers, you can collate that data into another computer, into another computer, into another computer. And what this Worldometer's website does is effectively gives you almost live tracking of global data. So if I just come out of here a minute, you can copy and paste this into um, your internet web browser yourselves, but I've preloaded it here as well. So as you can see, if we look at the top set of data here, current world population is approaching 8 billion. We're on 7.8 billion. And the reason it's growing so rapidly, in the 1960s, there were about 3 billion people on the planet. By the year 2000, there was double that, more than 6 billion. So growth is not only happening, it's happening very, very rapidly. And it's because if you look at the number of births this year, so far, 107 million, versus the number of deaths, 45 million, there's more than double the number of births happening than there are deaths. So the natural increase of global population is going to be really high because you've got so many more births than you have deaths. Just as a sideline, if you wanted to look at other sets of data on here, obviously we're focusing on population today, but there's a set on economics, there's a set on society and social media, which is quite interesting. The data about the environment is quite shocking. Um, a ton is about the weight of a Mini Cooper car, and this year so far we've released this many tons of carbon dioxide into our atmosphere, so it's no wonder that climate change is, is a concern. Um, 27, nearly, well, 27.5 billion tonnes of carbon dioxide released into our atmosphere. Land turning to desert so it can never be farmed again. 9 million hectares. Forest loss, 
nearly 4 million hectares. When you look at food as well, we've got 840 million starving people in the world, and yet we've got nearly 1.7 billion overweight people in the world. So something's going wrong here with the distribution of our food, water resources, energy as well. And this is why we're concerned with the shift from fossil fuels to renewable energy is not only because of obviously climate change and when you burn fossil fuels that releases greenhouse gases, but the fact that we are going to run out. So everything that we use oil to make, plastics, petrol, diesel, we've only got 40 odd years of it left. What are we going to do after that? You know, we've got about 148,000 days left till the end of, we run out of coal. So what's all our industry going to run on? And then when you look at health as well. Communic uh, communicable diseases is obviously far higher this year due to COVID than it would have been in previous years' data. But it also tells you bits about um, money spent on healthcare and things like that. So quite interesting categories that you can browse at your leisure, but we're going to focus on population today. And it's quite interesting to see just how rapidly these numbers are changing, especially the birth rate. Now, what you must always consider with data is its validity and reliability. Somebody being born in sub-Saharan Africa they can't read and write to fill in a form and take it to their local council office and that data gets inputted into a computer. There is no council office, there is no computer. So you have to take these with a little bit of a pinch of salt as well. A lot of the births happening in LICs are not going to be accounted for in this live data because they simply don't get counted. Okay, same with the deaths. But it gives us some figures to work from and we can see what the issue is here. We've got nearly tw well, more than twice the number of people being added to our population than there are leaving it. So if we come back to our PowerPoint, you can either do this as um, spider diagrams. I would suggest doing it as a table like this. You won't need more than half a page. On the next slide, I'm going to give you a load of factors. Some of them change the birth rate. They make people have more babies or less babies. And some of them affect the death rate. More people die or less people die. And what I'd like you to do is sort those factors into these two columns. So go ahead, pause the video here a moment and just set up about half a page with a table that looks like this. Okay, so here's the factors that I'm talking about. Let me just double check that you're okay with all of these words. So contraception is anything that stops you having a baby. It's family planning. So condoms, the pill, the coil, etc. Uh, strict religion, Catholic, uh, Catholicism, for example, believes in, in larger families and not using contraception. A good pension scheme. If you've got a good pension scheme, the government gives you money when you retire and whatever job sector you worked in your whole life pays you a pension as well. So when you stop working and you, when you're older, you have money to still have a good quality of life and access good healthcare. So if there's a good pension scheme, that normally means the death rate is going to be lower. If there's no pension scheme, like in LICs, so there's no money to look after you when you're older, who looks after you when you're older? Your children do. So at first glance, this would seem to make death rate go down this will also make birth rate go down because you've got money to look after you when you're older. You don't need children to look after you when you're older. Poor health care, children needed to work the land, women delay having a family, you should be okay with that. Sanitation, the word sanitation means how clean your conditions are. So poor sanitation, you've probably got a lot of diseases being spread that's going to affect your death rate. So what I'd like you to do is for each of these, write them either in the left-hand column if they change the birth rate, or in the right hand column if they change the death rate. Some of them, like we were just talking about with a good pension scheme, it will make death rate go down, but it will also make birth rate go down. So you might want to write that in the middle if it affects both. So sort them into the correct columns or put them in the middle if you think it affects both. And what I'd also like you to do is next to the statement, put a little arrow to indicate whether it's making the birth rate go up or down or the death rate go up or down. So for example, expensive to raise children, so you're gonna have less of them because they cost too much money. So I would write expensive to raise children in the birth rate and I'd put a little down arrow next to it because it'll mean less births, okay? So pause the video here a minute, go ahead and do some sorting and arrow drawing and then we'll discuss what you've got. Okay, so the judgment calls that I've made look like this. Now you may have poor diet, for example, if you take it to the extreme, if you don't eat enough, your periods stop, 
if you don't have enough nutrition. So some of you, if you're thinking about it super, super, super in depth, you might have even put that in the middle. Because if your diet isn't good enough and your periods stop, then your, then your birth rate will go down as well. But this, these are the judgment calls that I've made. No access to contraception. Your death rate might go up because of the higher rate of spread of diseases like HIV. And it will also put your birth rate up because without contraception, you're going to get a higher rate of pregnancies. Strict religion, beliefs and tradition encourage last families. Birth rate up. Good pension scheme, as we discussed. You don't need children to look after you when you're old and you won't be as likely to die when you're old because you can afford a good diet, good leisure activities, a good quality of life when you're old. Poor health care, obviously, is going to kill more people. Expensive to raise children, so people have less of them. Women delay having a career, so by the time you get around to having a family, you normally have fewer children. Children needed to work the land, that will put birth rate up. Poor sanitation will mean death rate up. Many children die before their fifth birthday. This is called infant mortality, and it will mean people will have more children to allow for the fact that more of them are going to die. You could also further subcategorize these into ones that apply to LICs and ones that apply to HICs. So this would tend to be an LIC. LIC, strict religious beliefs tend to be more commonplace in developing countries due to lack of education. You don't have any other idea on how things work, so you tend to rely more on religion. Good pension schemes, HIC, LIC, 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 HIC, HIC, LIC. Okay? So what we're going to look at is applying this understanding to a set of data. All right? Use the data to complete a line graph for birth rates and death rates in Wales. There should be an N there, sorry. An HIC. You do not need to copy out the table of data. You can just use it straight from the slide. If you have graph paper at home, great. If not, this is a fairly straightforward line graph. So you could just use the lines in your book if you so wish. There should be a zero down there as well. Okay? Use two different colours. One to join up your plots for birth rate and one to join up your plots for death rate. Okay, pause the video here a moment. Go ahead and construct that in your books, please. Remember your graph skills. It needs a title. It needs both axes labelled. Both axes should be evenly spaced. And it should be drawn in pencil, ideally. Okay, go ahead and give that a go now, please. Okay, so you should have ended up with a graph that looks something like this. The birth rate and the death rate, over time, both steadily decline, roughly in line with each other. So what that means is you don't really have a massive gap between your birth rate and death rate. So your natural increase is quite small. Population growth in HICs like Wales is fairly steady. Some countries even, Denmark, Italy, are starting to enter a period of time where their birth rate is dropping below their death rate. So their population is actually starting to decline very, very slightly. But the natural increase here is just plus one extra person per thousand people in the population. Okay. So make sure it's titled um, a graph to show changes in birth rate and death rate in Wales over time. Something like that. Make sure your axes are labelled. It should look like this. Okay. So we're going to analyse it now. Why has death rate come down quite steadily over time? Why hasn't it dropped really rapidly at any point? What brings death rate down? Better healthcare and medical advances. Over time, HICs have developed and created and invented various cures for various things, and our standard of living has improved, we've got cleaner conditions, and so on and so on. Okay, so our death rate has come down quite happily, quite steadily. And so has the birth rate, as society has sort of shifted towards equal, equal rights for women, careers first, let's go travelling first, all these sorts of things that mean people have decided to have less and less children. So all the way along, our population growth has been fairly steady for the last couple of hundred years. However, in a moment we're going to compare it with an LIC, but first of all, let's analyse this one. So the difference between birth rate and death rate is small throughout most of the graph, which means the natural increase is low, so population growth is steady or very slow. The death rate has dropped steadily over time because there have been gradual advances in medical technology which have slowly brought the death rate down. In addition, living conditions have slowly improved, which has also brought the death rate down. And the birth rate is low in HICs because it's expensive to raise children, 
and women are delaying having a family to have a career first. Society is different in HICs. Okay, so re-listen to what I've just said. Use your understanding from the table of factors that affect birth rate and death rate and go ahead and copy and complete this analysis underneath the graph in your books, please. Okay, let's compare that then with an LIC. Okay, Ghana, this is a country in India, a uh, country in India, a <laughs> country in the continent of Africa, sorry. All right, and Ghana is an LIC. Now you'll notice here, the birth rate in the 1700s and the death rate in the 1700s is actually fairly similar to Wales. But as you move through the decades and centuries, there's a lot of changes happening down here that the graph will start to look very different. So do exactly the same as you just did for Wales, but for this data for Ghana, please. So pause the video here and go ahead and do that. If you're trying to compare graphs, what should you always do with your axes? Yeah, you need to keep them the same. Don't stretch them out or squash them down or change your spacing at all. It needs to be the same to make them comparable. Okay, so take a pause here and construct that graph in your books, please. Okay, so you should have ended up with a graph that looks something like this. Now, the birth rate and death rate are both coming down, but the death rate is dropping much more rapidly than the birth rate. And by the time you get to the year 2000, the difference between the birth rate and death rate is 11 people per thousand in the population. So you've got a much higher natural increase in LICs than you have in HICs. Why is that? Why is birth rate taking longer to decrease than death rate? Why is birth rate still high in LICs? Children are needed to work for land. There's still strict religion. There's lack of access to contraception. It will take a lot of time to change culture and tradition that encourages large families. Meanwhile, though, from round about here, the death rate has taken quite a sharp plummet. Why? Especially in the last hundred years or so. What has happened? Yeah, HICs that have developed better medical care have become more aware of the issues in the rest of the world as media coverage has increased, as social media pressure has increased. So we've gone here, let us help you. And charities have gone over to LICs and put in water pumps. So there's now no diseases spread by dirty water in a lot of villages. They've given medical care and immunization, vaccinations against a lot of other diseases that also are bringing down the death rate. So the death rate has started to drop very, very rapidly. But the culture and tradition and the mentality is still one that encourages large families and therefore high birth rates. So the difference between birth rate and death rate in the first part of the graph is small. So the natural increase was relatively small then, the population was steady. The death rate has dropped rapidly in the last part of the graph though. But meanwhile, the death rate remains high. So the last hundred years or so, a couple of hundred years is a period of rapid population increase in LICs. In an LIC, the death rate has dropped really rapidly because medical technologies that have been developed by HICs have been shared with LICs in the last 50 to 100 years through charity work. So medical care, clean water, this has brought the death rate down really rapidly. However, the birth rate remains high because culture and tradition and mentality still encourage large families. So you have children to look after you when you're old because there's no pension scheme. You have children to help you work the land. You are still following strict religion. You don't have access to contraception. So all of these things mean the birth rate is taking a lot longer to come down than the death rate, meaning a period of high natural increase at the moment in LICs. So pause the video here a moment, summarize what's on the slide together with what I've just said to analyze the graph that you've just drawn. And that is lesson five done. So we've established that population growth in HICs is relatively steady. Population growth in LICs really is not. So what we're going to move on to next lesson is looking at, right, okay, if you live in an HIC with fairly steady population growth, long life expectancy due to good health care and good pensions, you've got quite a lot of old people, what advantages and disadvantages could that bring? Versus if you live in an LIC, which is experiencing rapid population growth, you've got too many people, what challenges could that bring? 
Okay, so as usual, if you have any issues, give me an email, gleasona at hubcumry.net. Otherwise, I'll see you soon for lesson six.